So you finally picked up your first Monster Hunter game. Things are going okay. You've slain a few big baddies, some deaths here and there, but nothing too crazy. Eventually you hit your first wall and it probably looks a little something like this. At this point, you have two options. Give up or endeavor to persevere. I'm Orboros. Let's talk. I have a lot of hours in Monster Hunter. And with this amount of no lifing across multiple games, there's always been one constant. Monsters will mess you up. It doesn't matter how far you are into the game, it doesn't matter how good your gear is, you are insignificant. You're basically the level one slime that you're supposed to blaze through in other RPGs. And I think that people don't really realize that when they first play the games. It's easy to see why. You're hunting fantastical dragons with oversized swords. The trailers exaggerate this even more, but do you know what else they always show? The hunter running away from the monster. That gives this series a pretty steep learning curve. Even early game, monsters will usually cart you in three hits, and once you get to master rank, you'll be lucky to survive too. And this compounds with the deliberately complex combat. The monsters move quick and hit hard. So you'd think that the hunters would be given the same tools. Nope, with the exception of some of the lighter weapons, your attacks are slow. They're weighty and with some of the heavier weapons, even clunky. So beginners will come in and expect the high octane combat of Metal Gear Rising and they get what feels like trying to run through three feet of snow with bricks for shoes. It will feel like that for a while. Even small attacks can be big commitments, and the stronger ones can feel like waiting in line at the DMV. Then you throw on top the fact that every single weapon is just as complex as the last. There are intricate combos and unique mechanics for each of the 14 weapon types, and learning them can be... exhausting. All of these compound to make one of the least beginner-friendly series in gaming. As soon as you survive one hunt, you're on to the next. It's brutal for newcomers, and like I said in the intro, you've got two options. Give up or push through. Those who push through will be greeted with the most satisfying and rewarding combat in all of gaming. There is nothing like finally mastering a tough hunt. There's nothing like landing a massive hit and getting that flinch before you take damage. There's nothing like finally getting that godforsaken gem to drop after 20 hunts because RNGesus Jesus decided to lay a curse upon you and your bloodline to never get good drop. You'll always be one material short, forever cursed with a non set that one extra DPS will taunt you for the rest of your hunting days. Uh, anyway. Once you get the hang of combat, things start to click. The hunts start to become a dance, a very deadly dance, but a dance nonetheless. The monster attacks, you dodge or in some cases counter, and then you attack. It becomes fluid in spite of the weighty combat. You start to recognize the tells of attacks. Every move that the monsters use are all telegraphed, so you begin to make those connections. It becomes a game of pattern recognition. This is the Monster Hunter moment. When the game starts to change from a slog to a high stakes battle for life and death. I know this comparison is a bit overdone, but it's very similar to Dark Souls. Both games have deliberate, weighty combat, and enemies can really mess you up. The difference is that the weapons in Monster Hunter are far more complex and creative than those in Dark Souls. Monster Hunter is also really the only game in this genre. There have been other games that attempted to move into this type of boss rush hunting gameplay, but none have really found any footing. It's similar to how Smash is really the only big mainstream platform fighter. It's their commitment to continually evolving their gameplay and how respectful they are to their players. Regardless, this is why people get hooked on the series. My favorite demonstration of this is a series of videos made by HeyJ. He's a smaller content creator who made a video about how he wouldn't be buying Monster Hunter Rise after being dissatisfied with the demo. He criticized the game for being slow and clunky, 
pretty much everything that we've all felt in the early hours of our hunting journey. After publishing that video, basically the whole Monster Hunter community descended on it. Not to troll or harass this man, but to give advice, empathy, and words of encouragement. And this is one of the most amazing displays of compassion I've seen from a game community. That act of kindness was enough to convince Heijay to give Monster Hunter another shot. He has now played World, Rise, 4 Ultimate, 3 Ultimate, and Monster Hunter 1. It's basically become a Monster Hunter channel. He made an entire series documenting his whole Monster Hunter journey. It's really incredible to watch. You see his demeanor slowly change over the course of it. His videos perfectly encapsulate that Monster Hunter moment, and is one of the best unintentional advertisements for the series and the community. So maybe you've stumbled across this video and you're like me, someone who tried Monster Hunter long ago and hated it. I gave it another chance in World and fell in love with the series. Hopefully this video can put into words what we've all experienced. Maybe you never gave the series a second shot, or maybe you've never even tried it before. To that I say, give it a shot. It's an amazing series with so much character and creativity. If you're looking for a game to jump into, I'd recommend World. In my opinion, it's the best starting point. I'd also recommend using Sword and Shield, Dual Blades, Lance, or Bow as your starting weapon. They're the simplest to pick up, but offer enough depth to feel rewarding. I would not recommend Rise because the Silkbind attacks and switch skills add more complexity on top of everything already present in the game. Older games are actually a little clunky. They're definitely great games, but you probably need to already be in the series to truly appreciate them. If you're looking for weapon tutorials, I'd strongly recommend Eric's Gaming. He has some of the most highly produced and extensive tutorials for each weapon type. If you're looking for someone who leans a little more personal and less professional, then I would also recommend Gaijin Hunter. This is the third of a four-part series I'm doing for what I'm calling Monster Hunter May. So go check out those other videos if I didn't completely bore you here. I love this series and wanted to share some of my experiences with others. To wrap up, Monster Hunter is really a series that you need to invest in. It's a slow burn of a candle as opposed to a big explosion of fireworks. But if you take the time to really, truly understand all of its mechanics, then there is no better feeling than being rewarded for your knowledge. Its community, gameplay, sense of accomplishment are second to none. If you've never given this series a try or gave up on it, you are truly missing out. All you need to do is learn how to dance with the monsters. Thanks for watching.